Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Christine Bibbick and I'm with FIRST Robotics Canada and I'm really glad that you were able to join me today as we're going to be exploring FIRST LEGO League Explore and having an introduction to the program interface. Welcome Logan, thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Hopefully by the end we'll have some familiarity with the different programming blocks um, and have a sense of how to start using them. So starting with the top row here, it's the flow blocks. So they, as the name suggests, control the flow of the program. Uh, starting with the start blocks, the first block is the one they use the most. It's the regular start block, how you start most programs. The one to the right of it is how you start more than one program at the same time. Uh, if you're using a computer, you can bind it to a specific key if you want. Uh, the third start block is the message start block. So we'll start whenever it receives a message from the block afterwards, which is the message block. Uh, the one to the next, next to that is the wait block, which um, pauses the program for a certain amount of time. The next one is a loop block, which repeats the program a certain number of times. Great. So how about these motor blocks? Maybe you can tell us about those next. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the um, We Do 2.0, that um, icon there is a picture of what the motor actually looks like. Uh, starting from the left, it is the speed control for the motor. So you can set a specific speed from one to nine uh, and that will run the motor. Then one to the right of that is uh, the time for the motor. So it will run the, the motor for a specific amount of time. Uh, then the next one is the stop motor. Uh, to the right of that is the two direction uh, orientation. The two blocks that determine the direction, sorry. Uh, so I'm spinning left or right. Uh, and then the last block from the green here changes the color of the LED on your uh, brain or brick of the We Do 2.0 set. Great. So it can be sort of a, a useful um, tool for trying to um, find problems in your programming mm -hmm. if you've had it. So you can put a different color in your eye, in your program at different points to see how far along your program is progressing until you yeah, reach the, sure. the challenge that you're having. But, um, and, and obviously just for fun, because who doesn't love fun? Okay, so moving on to that bottom row of red icon. And starting from the left is the sound block. So this plays a specific sound. Uh, it has numbers associated with uh, sounds that are already on the actual software that play through your tablet or computer, depending on what you're using. Uh, to the right of that is the image block. So this displays an image on your tablet or computer also uh, pre some that they have some already on it you can they're associated with numbers uh, to the right of that is the numbers block uh, so this is just what holds the uh, numbers you can use it as kind of a variable uh, to the right of that is the math block this addition subtraction etc you can change the numbers and then to the right of that is the display block which changes where your image or numbers uh, is displayed on the screen whether it's big or small or to the left or right or anywhere like that. So as everybody can see, you know, really simple. The icons are really easily recognizable, so there's nothing complicated about it, and they can be dragged and dropped into sequence um, to put together your program. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to point out is that at the bottom of some of these icons, you'll see a crescent shape um, sort of indentation on that, and that's really important to note as we move to the next slide, because these are the little blocks that fit into those um, little crescent shaped pieces at the bottom when you're dragging. Uh, so top left, that's comment blocks. This is used to um, write notes in your actual code so that you can remember what specific parts do uh, if you come back to it a good amount of time later. Okay. Uh, the next block is the uh, gyro block. So a gyro is something that can tell um, change in the direction so if it's tilted it will it will know it that that has happened so that block will just read whatever the gyro is um, sensing and then give it give it to, as an input to whatever it's connected to uh, the next one is just detecting if it moves at all similar concept uh, the one in the next line there is the sound block so this is an input from your computer or tablet if it hears something um, then it will give that input to the uh, block that it's connected to. Next one, the numbers block, you can put any number into this. This is how you control speeds and what image to show, things like that. 
Uh, next is the, uh, the another numbers block, which is used to transfer numbers between blocks. So you can input or output through this. Uh, the next one is a randomized. So as the dice you might expect, it randomizes the number. Then the last two rows here, these are for the sensor that you get with the WD2 Conel. Starting from the left, it uh, detects if, if there's any change in the distance that it sees, so forwards or backwards. The next one is just inputting whatever information it sees as a distance. Uh, to the right of that is to de detect if whatever it sees is coming closer to it. Then the other one is if it's going further away. Uh, then the bottom row is the, the gyro like I was talking about earlier. So this is just different directions. So if it tilts forwards, it will send that signal. If it tilts to the right, tilts to the left, tilts backwards. Um, it will send those to the block that it's connected to. So moving on. So step one is installing the software if you don't have it. It's free software through um, Lego Education. And you can download and install that on your laptop or a tablet. And we encourage you just to experiment with the different software. You can see here we've got a, a play box started and you can drag the icons from the bottom row up and try putting different inputs in and just having some fun with it. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for other videos in this series. For more information about the First Lego League Explore program and first programs for other age groups, visit www.firstroboticscanada.org. Until next time, continue to explore First Lego League Explore and happy building.